So in this video, we're going to review some highway design plans. We'll look at both horizontal, vertical, and the cross-section components of this. So this is a set of design plans from Caldwell County, North Carolina. And we'll, we'll take a look at just at one sheet for horizontal, one for vertical, and then look at the cross-section element. But we just need to keep in mind that there is a larger set of design plans. We're just going to focus on a couple of these sheets. Uh, focusing on this particular topic that we're going to look at. So we're actually going to look at sheet number six. And we can see that in the upper right of this page. And we're actually going to zoom into this one horizontal curve here. So there's lots of information on this sheet, but we're going to focus in on just this horizontal curve. And then we're going to relate that horizontal curve to the vertical curvature and the cross-section design as well. So zooming in a little bit more here, we are given this PC station and the PT station, and we also have some curve information here as well. So this is for this particular horizontal curve. And again, we have this PC of the curve, the PT of the curve, PC is the point of curvature, PT is the point of tangency. So we would be on the tangent here, then we'd be on the simple circular arc between the PC and the PT, and then returning to the tangent. One of the things we're going to zoom in on a little bit is looking at this cross-section element. So we can see this 0 0.02, 0 0.01, 0 0.00, and so on. And we have it both at the beginning of the curve and at the end of the curve. And this is looking at our cross slope. So even though we're looking at a plan view, so we're looking down on this roadway, we're given some information about how that cross section works and how that transition from normal crown to our design super elevation works as well. Okay, so let's dig in a little bit more. A few things we're going to look for. We've got the super elevation, 0.032 or 3.2 percent. It's a 1200 foot radius curve, has a design speed of 40 miles per hour. The length of the curve is 265.88 feet, and we could check that math. That should be the distance from the PC of the curve to the PT of the curve. So if we subtract those two stations that we see here, we should come up with 265.88. We're also given the deflection angle here, 12 degrees, 41 minutes. 41 seconds, and this is turning to the right as we're going up and increasing stationing. And the PI, the point of intersection for the station, is 28 plus 44.28. So we'll start working our way through this curve. We've got normal crown at each end of the curve. So 0 0.02, if you look closely, you can see that the arrows each point away from the center line, so that means the water is falling away from the center line to each edge at this point. We have a two-lane roadway here, so the center of the road, one lane on each side, the water is going to flow away in our normal crown scenario. Next, as we move along, and I'm skipping some of the points here, but we're at adverse crown removed. That's where we have 0% on the outside edge. We're at the normal crown or 2% slope on the inside lane of travel. And we've got that on both sides of the, the roadway. We can see on the inside edge, there's no change. We're not seeing any markings here, any designation. This is all still 0 0.02. And we can see on this side of the curve, the PC side of the curve, the inside edge is also still at 0 0.02 until we reach this point. We'll talk a little bit more about it, uh, the PC and the PT, and that being at 0 0.02. Now, as we continue to move along, we do reach that point, PC and PT. And at this point for this particular curve, we do have reverse crowns. This is where the whole roadway is sloped at 2%. And at this point, now the inside edge is going to start its rotation as well. We're going to continue rotating upward. Both the inside and outside lanes are going to rotate together until we reach our design super elevation, which in this case is 3.2%. So this is just giving us a little bit of a taste of what we can see on the plan view, what that looks like in the cross section view, so that we know we're, we're looking at the center line of the roadway with this thicker black line. 
but we do have some shape and some important details as we flow out from that center line. Okay, so zooming in a little bit closer, we want to take a, a closer look at some of these arrows here. So starting with our normal crown, we can see those arrows point away from the center line of the roadway. So we know each one is falling away from the center line there. So the cross section is going to look like this, that rooftop slope, normal crown 0 0.2, 0.02 or 2% falling away from the center line. We've again got our adverse crown removed. It's 0%. Slope on the outside lane, 2% on the inside lane. Again, that inside lane slope isn't changing yet. Until we reach this point, we're at 2%. This is called reverse crown. And then finally, our design super elevation, where both the inside and outside lanes are at 3.2% super elevation. And they're going to match, the inside and outside lanes are going to match from above 2% up to our design super elevations. There's going to be a consistent rotation of both the inside and outside lanes beginning at reverse crown and moving through design super elevation. Okay, so on our drawing, we're actually given that the distance for a 1% change in super elevation is 20.8 feet. So we're going to use that in this diagram. This diagram shows us the profile so for the top portion is showing us the profile view of the curve, and the bottom portion here is showing us the cross-section view. So we're seeing two elements here, profile and cross-section view, to try and get some understanding of what's going on in this curve. So adding in some of the elements, we know the PC station 27 plus 10.79, the PT station 29 plus 76.67, and our design super elevation of 3.2%. These are all givens. We again were told on the in the design plans that a 1% change in super elevation takes 20.8 feet to accomplish. And therefore, our super elevation runoff is an important factor when we're looking at our profile view and how that cross section changes throughout our horizontal curve. We need to go up to 3.2%. So 3.2% times 20.8 feet gives us a runoff length or distance of 66.56 feet. And that occurs on both sides, both the PC side and the PT side of the curve. We can also find our tangent runout distance. It takes 2% in slope change to go from normal crown to adverse crown removed and from adverse crown removed to reverse crown. So we have 40.16, 41.6 feet on the PC side and the PT side for our tangent runout. Now we can calculate some of our stations for our various components. So adverse crown removed happens two thirds of the runoff before the PC. So that's gonna give us station 26 plus 66.42. We're gonna go back 41.6 feet to reach where our normal crown starts. So if you're actually thinking about this curve in terms of where our cross slope changes occur, we leave normal crown at station 26 plus 24.82. But again, our PC is at station 27 plus 10.79. So we've got a long distance, about 80 to 90 feet of cross slope changes that are happening before we actually re reach what we would consider the horizontal curve because that horizontal curve is changing in the horizontal alignment. But again, we have stuff that's, that's changing in the cross section perspective. We can also then find the station of our reverse crown that is station 27 plus 08.02. We can also find our design super where our design super elevation occurs, that's one third of the runoff past the PC, so station 27 plus 32.98. And in a similar manner, we can find the stations of the points on the side of the curve with the PT. So our adverse crown removed happens at 30 plus 21.04. That's again, two thirds of the runoff past the PT. Then we can find point H where we return to normal crown is at station 30 plus 62.64, that's 41.6 feet 
past our adverse crown removed. And then we can also find the station of our reverse crown, station 29 plus 79.44. That happens 41.6 feet prior to adverse crown removed. And we can also find where our design super elevation ends. That's station 29 plus 54.48. So our 3.2% cross slope, cross section happens in this portion. We are in normal crown when we leave point H and before point A. And again, that's, that station differs tremendously from where our horizontal curve is. Our horizontal curve, so from the, the plan view perspective, this curve only occurs from the PC to the PT, station 27 plus 10.79 to station 29 plus 76.67. But there's a lot that's happening before and after the PC, and before the PC and after the PT, and that's in that cross section perspective. So if we look down here, we've got a lot going on in that transition before you actually reach the PC, and then after you leave the PT in order to get us to and from normal crown. So this is important to consider, especially if we're looking at elements that may be close to a horizontal curve, because that cross section is gonna affect things on the roadway outside of the bounds of the PC and the PT. And again, this is for a simple curve, a spiral curve and its components look a little different. So this is only for a simple curve, PC and PT. Now we're gonna zoom in a little bit on vertical alignment. So we're gonna look at the same general area of the curve in this kind of tw station 26 to station 30 is what, what we're interested in here. And we can see we've got an entrance grade here of negative 3.5%, an exit grade of negative 8%. So we've got a vertical curve from the PVC or VPC and the PVT or VPT. So the point of vertical curvature and the point of vertical tangency. And so what's important in our vertical alignment is we need to know what station we're focused on because it matters, are we on the curve or are we just on a tangent? And it's, it can be very simple with vertical alignment, especially if you're not on a, on a curve. And so let's highlight our particular location. So the PC is at station 27 plus 10.79, and our PT was at station 29 plus 76.67. And let's say, for instance, I wanted to know, we wanna know just what was the elevation of the center line. And again, we're only talking about the center line here. If we wanna know the elevation of the edges of the pavement, we need to take the information that we gained from our previous step looking at the cross section and relate it to our vertical alignment here. So the first thing we can notice is the PC is on a vertical curve. So we're gonna need to do the parabolic equation to be able to figure out what is the elevation of the PC of this curve. It's not gonna be as simple as reading this this if using just our grades. Now you can get pretty close and it is very important in my opinion to, to have some expectation of what that elevation is. So it'd be useful to come over here and say, well, the PVC is somewhere in the 1,071 or 72 feet elevation range. We can do the same thing for our PT. We know it's at station 29 plus 76.67. We can read this graph as well. We should be somewhere in the 1,052, 1,053 foot range, but we should actually calculate. We can be a little more precise when we're working with our vertical curves than just reading it off this graph. It's helpful to, to have some check for us to, to know what we're looking for, but we know the elevation of the PVI. We're given it here. It's at station 26 plus 75, an elevation of 1,075.88. And we're gonna go from that, from that PVI location, we're gonna go down an 8% grade until we reach the, our point of interest, which is our PT in this case, which is 301.67 feet from the PVI. All we're doing there is subtracting the station of the PI from the station of the PT, and that gives us 301.67 feet. And if we just solve this simple equation here, we're going to get an elevation of the PT of 1,051.75. And that's consistent with what we said when we were just reading this graph, that we'd be around 
1,052 feet. So it is really helpful to have some reasonableness check and you can do that right here with these vertical curves. So I said the PC elevation at the center line is gonna be more complex than looking at the PT because the PT was on the tangent, the PC is on a parabolic curve. So we need to solve our parabolic equa equation we need to specify it for this particular vertical curve, and then we can use it to solve for our point of interest. So our component C, that's the elevation of the PVC, is at 1,083.76. B is just G1, so that's negative 3.5, that's a given. And A is G2 minus G1 over 2 times L. So negative 8 minus negative 3.5 over 2 times 4.5, and that gives us negative 4.5 divided by nine, which equals A of negative 0.5. So this is our ABC components for our parabolic equation. So Y equals 1,083.76 minus 3.5X minus 0.5X squared. The X, we want to know the distance from the station of the PVC, so that's our vertical point of curvature, to the station of our PC, so that's a horizontal uh, station that we're looking for. There's only one stationing, so we don't need to, to mix different things up, but the stations we're looking for is our uh, PVC at 2,450 and our PC at station 2,710. 0.79 gives us an X of 2.6079 stations. So X is always in stations for our vertical equation. So Y equals 1,083.76 minus 3.5 times 2.6079 minus 0.5 times 2.6079 squared. And that's going to give us an elevation at our PC of 1,071.23 feet. And again, this is at the center line only. So we need to use our cross section information to be able to understand or determine what the edges of the pavement elevation may be or the edge of the shoulder or the ditch or any of those things are gonna flow off of that center line elevation. So we need to know the cross section in order to determine what those individual component elevations are. And it's, it's usually helpful to look at our typical section. So this typical section is giving us information about what that cross section is going to look like. And here we're, we're seeing typical state sections for various stations. We're going to be in this second category here. And in this, in this particular situation, we're going to have 12 to 18 foot lanes varying depending on various components of what the uh, horizontal conditions are going to be. And we actually have what our final or ultimate typical section is going to look like. And this is going to be a four lane road. So currently it's just a two lane. Others, there'll be later build out segments where it does is expanded to a four lane roadway. And so the typical sections here are showing what that future design, future cross section will actually look like. And all of this is important for us to be able to understand and relate how horizontal and vertical and cross-section all fit together and what we can solve with those various components.